Genesis Passive Filter Synthesis lets you quickly design LC filters to any specification. To start, go to the Syntheses menu under New Item and select Passive Filter. I'll start this example with the factory default values. Now you'll see three windows. There's the Filter Synthesis Properties, the Synthesized Filter Schematic, and the Simulated Filter Frequency Response. Using the Types drop-down menu, you can select from four different filter types. There's Low Pass, High Pass, Band Pass, and Band Stop. For this example, I'll synthesize a band pass filter. Using the Shapes drop-down menu, you can select from eight different filter shapes. There's Butterworth, which has a flat pass band with slow roll-off. Chebyshev, for faster roll-off with pass band ripple. Bessel, for flat group delay. Singly terminated, for filters that have zero or infinite impedance at one end. These filters are commonly used for multiplexer designs by connecting multiple infinite impedance sections to a single node. There's Cower Chebyshev elliptic filters, which have steeper transition and better ejection. Genesis can even synthesize special shapes like single equalized and Blinchikov that are very difficult to calculate by hand. Blinchikov is a fourth order bandpass design with a constant passband delay. Or you can load a custom filter design. For example, I could pick Cower Chebyshev. Then I could pick a subtype like Minimum Inductor, which is desirable because inductors are usually expensive. Whenever you pick a new subtype or type, Genesis automatically updates the frequency response and schematic. I'll switch back to a Chebyshev filter so I can explain a little more about subtypes. Chebyshev has eight different filter subtypes. There's subtypes to minimize components. There's coupled subtypes for narrow bandwidths. There's special subtypes like symmetry preserving, which will give a symmetrical bandwidth and group delay. I'll pick minimum inductor. For differential filters, you can easily switch to a balanced circuit, but I'll stick with a normal filter for this example. Genesis will warn you that the default bandwidth is too narrow for the subtype, and it suggests switching to a coupled subtype. Let's go to the Settings tab so we can change the bandwidth. I'll change the low cutoff frequency to 700 MHz and the high cutoff frequency to 1000 MHz. It's easy to adjust the filter order and you can instantly see the effects that a new filter order will have on the design. You can even see the effects of a really high order, like 21. Rather than just guessing, you can use the Estimate Order tool to see what order filter you'll probably need. Let's say you want 5 dB of attenuation at 685 MHz, and 5 dB of attenuation at 1015 MHz. You can see that you would probably need a 7th order filter. I'll put a 8th order for now. I'll allow more ripple in the passband, and I'll adjust the cutoff attenuation to 3 dB. To make it easier to compare different settings, use the Graph Checkpoints feature. To start, turn on Graph Checkpoints. Now just change any setting, and you can visually compare different values of that setting. I'll use a fourth order filter for this example. I'll turn off Graph Checkpoints to clear the graph. Let's go to the Defaults tab. Here you can see the default Q values that Genesis will use when it's simulating components. The default Q value for inductors and capacitors is 1 times 10 to the 6. This is pretty high, so I'll change it to something more realistic. I'll use 100 for inductors and 1000 for capacitors. OK, let's look at the G values tab. G values are the polynomial coefficients for every order automatically calculated by Genesis. You can also edit them or add your own. You would probably get new G values from a filter book or from your own design, but Genesis comes with some examples to get you started. Finally, let's look at the summary tab. Here you can see key design results from the synthesis of your filter such as the exact upper and lower 3 dB frequencies, the sum of all the G values, which can be used to calculate things like insertion loss, 
and the exact output resistance. It's generally desirable to have equal input and output resistance, but Chebyshev only has this at odd orders. Let's quickly go back to the settings tab and change to an odd order. I'll just lower it to a third order filter. You can easily verify the new output resistance by looking at the bottom of the properties window. Let's go back to the summary tab. I'd say this design looks pretty good. Close the filter properties window, go to the window menu, and tile all the windows horizontally to make it easier to see. The synthesized component values are non-standard, but this is easy to fix. I'll use the tuning feature of Genesis to get to standard values. Press Ctrl A on the schematic to select all of the components. Then go to the schematic menu and click Make Components Tunable. The component values that are being tuned will turn green and they'll show up in the Tune window. Enable Auto Recalc to automatically run analysis when the values are tuned. Then set the tuning method to standard values. Now tune any component up or down and it'll go to the nearest standard value. Tune all of the components in the schematic to standard values. The frequency response automatically checkpoints so you can see the changes that you make. Now the component values are standard. However, maybe you only have 22 picofarad capacitors. Save this tune as a tuned state so we can compare it against new values. Then, retune the two 20 picofarad capacitors to 22 picofarad. It's easy to see the difference between the original tuned and retuned filters. I'll recall the previous state. And I'll remove the graph checkpoints. Place a marker on the gain plot so we can measure the bandwidth. Then make it into a bandwidth marker and Genesis will automatically measure the bandwidth. This bandwidth is close to the original and the component values are standard. Filter designed. Now that you've seen how easy it is, open up Genesis and design your own filter.